Hello, I'm Brad Rude, and today I'm going to be talking to you about bomb visualization, or more specifically, visualization of the digital product definition. Product development is becoming more complicated. This is driven not only by the fact that the products themselves are more complex, but also that the ecosystem and the number of people involved in producing products can become more complicated. If we take a look at the digital definition of the product, there may be multiple tools that are participating in creating that definition. Additionally, there may not be a single product that is delivered to the market. Instead, it can be made up of many different options and features that can be used to deliver to different markets or different customers or providing the customer with tailorability to meet their specific needs. Lastly, very rarely will you find that a complete design is developed within a single location. Typically, there's going to be involvement from many different geographies and also feedback and input from many different organizations or disciplines. With the complexity comes implications. If we're not able to effectively communicate to all the people who are required to participate in product development, this can lead to delays. Additionally, if we're not able to successfully validate the digital models, then we oftentimes don't find out about issues until we get to production or creating the physical product. This can create additional delays as well as increase the cost by having to absorb late stage changes. Lastly, if we can't effectively validate our digital models, it can lead to costs that are incurred during the manufacturing or service stage of the life cycle where it becomes much more expensive to be able to address any quality issues that were identified. PTC's enterprise validation and review solutions allow companies to transform from a reactive approach where things are oftentimes identified once they reach the physical and move to a proactive phase. With PTC's enterprise validation and review, you're able to validate your digital products before they reach production. You're going to be able to incorporate feedback and ideas from different stakeholders across different disciplines. You're going to be able to more effectively share the design as part of design reviews. You're going to be able to incorporate feedback, whether it's design for manufacturing or design for service, as part of this process. And ultimately, when you get to the point of creating physical products, you're going to be able to minimize any scrap or rework necessary by doing an effective job during the digital validation. PTC's visualization solutions are built on a single scalable architecture. PTC's CreoView platform will provide access to all required participants in many different facets. So whether you're looking at the information in the embedded PTC windshield solutions or whether you're doing advanced digital mock-up using massive assemblies, you're still leveraging the same core engine of CreoView. Additionally, CreoView can view many, many different types of formats across different mechanical tools, electrical design tools, and documentation. CreoView also offers an open API so that you can leverage this rich asset within your own applications. An additional item to point out is that this same visualization is embedded throughout PTC's product lifecycle management solutions from product engineering to manufacturing planning to service and parts delivery. In this slide, you'll see many examples of visualization in work whether you're looking at large 3D mechanical designs or looking at 2D electrical designs. You'll also see examples of model-based definition where you can put many important elements on the model itself for viewing, whether it be critical dimensions or GTAL. You'll also see examples of feedback and markups 
whether it's a 2D drawing, a document, or a 3D model as part of the change process. You'll also see how visualization plays an integral role in manufacturing planning and delivering information out as part of technical publications or part catalogs. Lastly, visualization is at the core of augmented reality and virtual reality experiences that we'll talk about later in this presentation. Now let's talk about a couple of specific customers that are leveraging PTC's visualization within their enterprise. Lifetime is a global manufacturer of consumer products here you can see a couple of examples including storage and tables. They also make sporting equipment. One of the challenges that Lifetime has seen is how can you get the best collaboration and best input from across their enterprise and how can you ensure that products are being delivered with the quality required for the Lifetime brand. Lifetime utilized PTC's visualization and Creo View as a core element of the solution to provide that type of feedback from across the enterprise and to validate the solutions are going to meet their needs, whether it be part of their design process or final products coming off the line that conform to the specifications of the design. One of the things that Lifetime found is that because visualization is an inherent part of the process where these viewables are automatically generated and accessible, they're finding more and more ways in which this information and that rich visual data can be used across their enterprise in ways that they hadn't imagined. Another customer example is SMS CMEG. They create large complex facilities that are manufactured and built on site. As you can imagine, this type of environment can become very complex with lots of different interacting parts. It was important to CMEG to understand how to easily identify problems, collisions, or interferences with pipework and additional parts so that they can be built correct the first time. They also needed to establish clear routes or routes in which the cranes that move back and forth can do perform their functions without colliding with any additional items. Lastly, as part of designing and proposing these facilities, they needed to review their solutions with their customers beforehand. PTC's visualization solutions helped them address all of these areas, whether it was involving digital mockups of the facilities to make sure that it worked as intended, or whether it was to make sure that the customer had an understanding of what the final design would look like and how they could perform maintenance. This type of validation during the digital phase was imperative and helped them address their needs both on time and on quality. At this point, we'd like to show you some software in action. During today's demonstration, I'm going to focus on three areas. First, I want to talk about the impact visualization has on core recognition across the enterprise. Secondly, I want to talk specifically about the importance of configuration management and the role visualization plays. And lastly, I want to introduce different ways in which people can experience the visualization, including augmented reality and virtual reality. Let's begin today's demonstration by looking at how visualization plays a key role in product lifecycle management. I'm going to begin simply by looking for anything that has to do with a monitor. In the search results, I'm presented with a number of different designs, CAD designs, and documentations related to this. In this example, I can also see that there is a thumbnail or a preview. Here we can see this is much more than just an image. It's an interactive element where I can easily quickly look through the different items or components that make up this bill material and quickly toggle through to understand what the parts are that make this up. I also see it has some basic information and attributes available for me. I can perform actions on this directly from here or I can look at other related information. Here I can see there's a number of different documents that define this in more detail. I have a link directly to the mechanical design as well as a list of change requests and change notices. For now, 
I'm going to jump directly to the change that this is tied to. Here I have a full view of all elements of the change request. If I go ahead and zoom down, I can see any associated documents such as impact analysis. I'm presented immediately with any annotations or, or markups that define how this change should be handled and also a list of items that are included or what we call affected objects. Here you can see is the same monitor that we saw in our search results. Now I'm going to take a quick look at the more specific details of this monitor. So here I'm presented with a parts list or a bill of material for this monitor. While the listing of parts is useful, it's much more easy for me to understand if I actually take a look at the visualization associated. So here I can do things like pan and zoom. I also have the ability to interact back and forth between the parts list and the model itself. Here we can see it selects the parts for me. If I select the component connector here, it will show that in my panel on the left. I also have additional tools I can use. So I can maybe zoom to the selected component. I can zoom to the com complete component. I can choose how I want to view this design. And I also have the ability to do things like uh, explode, etc. Now, if I want to see additional information related to the visualization, I can go to the annotations tab. Here, it provides me with a list of all the different markups and items associated. I mentioned before that the markup has been stored as part of the change and I can easily view that from anywhere. So now I'm looking at the markup associated with it. It looks like there's going to be a chassis change and I need to update the back housing so that the bores can be mounted at the correct location. Now if I want to do additional work within Creo View, I can do that. Note that for any item selected, I have the ability to view any PDM link attributes associated with that. So I have full traceability. Likewise, I have the ability to interact with PDM link itself. So if I want to go to the CAD design details, I can click here. If I want to go to the windshield bill of material details, I can select here. And I can also work interactively with the windshield clipboard to copy and paste things between changes. Now one more item I want to show you before we leave here is I'm just going to open this in a whole new view and at this point I may want to do things like understand for interferences. So with that I'm going to take our interference detection e engine I'm going to specify that I want to look at the whole structure and I'm going to have it run through and quickly find any any potential problems that may exist. Now I'm doing this from within the Creo view client this can also be executed from the server side and run in batch mode. And then the results can be sto stored as PDM link reports and used as part of change processes. In this case, I found that there were 92 interferences, some of which may be a problem and some of which may be understood. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just take a quick look. I'm going to choose to display only the intersecting parts and I want to highlight the volume and the contour of that and I can simply go through the list of interferences. Likewise, I have the ability to take a look at the full report to understand all the problems that may exist. At this point in the demonstration, I'd like to transition to talk a bit more about configuration management. To do that, we're going to work with the 844J product. Some products have more than one possible design or more than one possible outcome. They may be part of an assemble to stock or an assemble to order. In this example, we can see that there's a number of different axle options. There's both a standard axle and a limited slip option. Here we can also see that there are specific design codes and logic associated when one of these variants is possible or the other. We can use 
Glo PTC's global platform solutions in order to filter to a unique design. Here I have some saved filters and so if I simply say I want the 844J light equipment it has a number of different design codes stored as part of that configuration and we can see now that just the standard front axle is in use. Additionally we have the ability to interrogate this in several different ways. So for example not only do I have option codes as a means, I also have the ability to specify any type of, of configuration, whether it be latest, baseline, effectivity. It can be an engineering design bomb or a manufacturing or service bomb, as well as I can view it by state, whether I'm looking for only release data or in work. Additionally, I can choose to specify a spatial filter if I want to think about how to filter this from a geometric perspective. So I can specify bounding box conditions, I can specify sp uh, spherical conditions, or if I have an individual component selected, I can choose to look only within a certain proximity of that part. We talked already about the option filter. The last thing I want to talk about is an additional attribute filter. So within this design, we have certain modules get grouped together, which we call an ETN. And I want to filter for only those modules that are part of a specific system group. So in this example, I have a number of systems that are defined that make, this, make up this vehicle. And in this case, I simply want to look at only those elements related to the steering. When I apply this filter, all of these configuration criteria are going to be used to generate the resulting structure for me. As we mentioned before, it's, it may be useful to look at a parts list, but it's oftentimes much more valuable to look at the details. In this case, we ask to look only at the steering system so only those parts of the design are showing up. Now I may want to look at a little bit more broad perspective of this so I can simply go back and update my filter to go beyond the steering group and actually look at the entire drivetrain. So at this point, I'm now looking across this entire front wheel or all wheel drive loader, but only at those components or subsystems that are part of the drivetrain. At this point, I can do many different things. I can measure, I can, you know, toggle and search between the components. But for more advanced things, I may want to actually open this in the full Creo View client. So when I open this in Creo View, it's actually going to launch this for me with the same configuration rules that I have applied within P Windchill PDM Link. Now that I have my drivetrain retrieved into the full Creo View client, I have lots of different options to look into and interrogate this design. The basic interface is made up of three panes as we see here. On the left hand side I have my structure, in the middle pane I have my 3D model, and at the lower level I have any attributes that are being passed over as part of the model or PDM link. In this case if I simply choose on this plate on the front of this loader I can see that it highlights that part for me in the left hand structure as well as it provides any attribute information that's available within this model. So for example here we can see that there's a creator Dimitri. That's part of every single design. Now I may want to use this from a work breakdown structure to understand which components are designed by which parts of my design team. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm simply going to make select a different or orientation for this. 
I'm also going to hide that bottom uh, attribute panel to maximize my screen. When I'm looking at this, I have the ability to look at it in many different modes, whether it's shaded as we see, a hidden line removed, or shaded with edges. In this case, it might be easier to see the definition of the individual components. Now one thing I want to do, as I mentioned, because each component and each geometry has all kinds of information associated to it, I can leverage that information. I'm going to do a color-coded search to understand the conditions or criteria in this model and provide me with a graphical or actually I call it a virtual intelligence, virtual business intelligence. Example types of reports can be I want to see which parts are released or I want to see all the different parts by state. So in work parts might be one color, release parts might be another, etc. I may also want to view it by material to understand what's made up of of steel versus rubber versus zinc, etc. In this example, I'm going to choose parts by creator. I have a design team with 10 people that have been involved with this, and I simply create a criteria for each of these users and provide a color coded results based upon that. Here I can see a list of parts color coded based upon the creator. In this case, I want to apply that color coding to the actual 3D model. Here I'm going to go ahead and simply change the render mode, there we go, to see what we're looking at. Now notice that there's certain different colors for each different users. Maybe I wanted to isolate only to those components that are in red. To do that I can simply filter my results and I can choose to focus only on those items and at this point I can select them all. Oops, select all and then I can actually open them up in their own view. So now we're looking at the components that were designed by Lucy. In this case I may want to go back and do one more check. So you, as we mentioned there's different ways in which we can view or design. So I'm going to go back to my 3D model that includes a whole drivetrain and now I may want to do something around sectioning. So in this case I want to section on the y-axis here it provides me with a slice through the entire vehicle. I may also want to view the 2D perspective of that. Let me just quick make a quick adjustment to this. And I'm also going to make the background darker so it's easier to see. All right, so now we have each component cross section within this. I can step this through back and forth simply by going and selecting on this geometry and moving it at either set increments or throughout. So as I go through I may get to a point where I need to get more details. I can simply go over to my 2D view and at that point I can continue things such as taking measurements. So if I want to see the distance from one line to the other for example I can do that. So these are just a few examples of the many powerful capabilities that CreoView has, especially when combi combined with the rich information of PDM Link and the scalability of high performance visualization. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about augmented reality and how the visualization of PTC solutions can leverage this. Here we're looking at bringing in the same visualization data that we showed in the demonstration and retrieving it into ThingWorks Studio, PTC's augmented reality solution. In this way we can position 3D information relative, relative to a ThingMark and also have the ability to pull in additional information such as live sensors or feedback or other types of IoT information and make that embedded as part of the augmented reality experience. Here you can see we're showing the experience using a tablet and navigating to a thing mark. Once we accept the specific experience, it will go ahead and it will load that same visual information, only it's going to give it to us in a 3D experience. So perspective is important as well. So in this case, we're simply rotating the paper to allow you to understand what that perspective would be. 
So today, you are able to see several examples of how PTC's enterprise validation and review solutions provide value to the entire enterprise. It will help lower product development costs and also allow you to protect critical IP. From an engineering perspective, it's a cornerstone of designing to quality and involving a large group of people to make sure the products meet the end customer needs. And also from a manufacturing perspective, to help you take the digital design and turn that into a physical product at the most productive way possible. If you're interested in learning more about PTC's enterprise validation and review solutions, you can find us on the web at ptc.com. Here you can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one demonstration or ask to speak with a specialist located at the information below. With that, I'll conclude today's demonstration. I'd like to thank you for your time. I also hope that you found this informative and maybe have some new ideas how visualization can help you in your product lifecycle management goals. Hopefully we're able to demonstrate how your bill of material can be enhanced with rich visualization, how you can work better across a distributed team, and how you can thrive in the digital world.